thank you so much uh, for uh, willing for your willing heart to share what God has done, your salvation story. It's incredible. And let's just share it with people. Would you please start with, uh, with sharing um, where you're from and your life story? Okay. Um, so my name is Hannah. Uh, I am originally from Michigan. I moved to um, Washington in 2019. Uh, so now I live in Kennewick with my husband. Come on. <laughs> awesome. Anna, could you please share with us how, how were you growing up and what are the things that uh, you were struggling in life and how, where did the life and the devil took you? Uh, so I grew up in rural Michigan, uh, hunting, fishing, all of that stuff. Loved it. Um, uh, I didn't grow up in like a religious household or anything like that. I've great parents. I love them, and my mom's watching. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> um, so uh, I didn't really have much experience in church other than going to, like, um, youth group, but really wasn't going for Jesus. I was just going for friends. <laughs> uh, what was the rest of the question? <laughs> just share with us, what are the things that you went through in life, and how did you found Jesus? Um, Oof. Okay, so I was, as of, when I was younger, I had some like kind of weird like spiritual out of body experiences, and I had I was really young when this had happened, and I had uh, talked to somebody about it, and they had told me that no, that that doesn't exist, that's not real, that's you know, so it completely shut me down, and I didn't talk to anyone about it. Um, as I grew older, I started like kind of wondering like there's got to be more to life, like there's just it's there has to be more. There's something deeper to life. I feel something deeper. And so I started searching, um, and that kind of led me into uh, becoming a psychic medium. And I was starting my own business. Um, I was doing readings for people, uh, doing a lot of crazy things. And um, yeah, and then so that's kind of where I got into my early 20s. And uh, I was starting that business. And that's, is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. And so with you, going on this search for supernatural you didn't know that that stuff wasn't from God and it was you know from the devil and you got deeper and deeper into that to the point where you opened your business to you know uh, doing a psychic business and things like that uh, how all those things led you to your salvation and when was the moment when you stopped doing that and what happened how did you meet Jesus Christ so um, I kind of back up a little bit. I don't like going to bars. I don't like drinking any of that stuff, even before I was a Christian. And there was one day where I was just driving on the road, and this is while I was the psychic medium, and I was doing lots of drugs as well that also helped open my mind. Uh, <laughs> and I was driving on the road, and I was passing a bar and a little town, and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to stop and have a drink. And that's, like, not me at all. I just, not me. But I stopped there, and I met this guy named Steve, and he had tickets to this big giant festival that was going to happen and I went with him to this festival and I ended up meeting a guy there named Brett and Brett uh, was a Christian and he was going to these festivals and talking to people about Jesus although he was well that's a different part but anyways <laughs> so uh, so I was at this festival and we somehow met Brett in a huge uh, 40,000 hippies at this festival. I don't know how we ran into him. I mean, obviously it was God. Like, there's no other way. For me to even stop at the bar, talk to this guy, get a ticket to go there, all of that was like God was had his hand in that. And uh, so we met Brett, and then we started talking, and he, Brett had this really long totem pole with flags on it, and the flags, one was a Christian flag and one was a Jewish flag. And I was like, oh, I really like your flags. I had no idea what they meant. Uh, and so he asked me like what I do. And I told him, Oh, I work at a, a local dairy making ice cream and all that stuff. But then he kept asking me. And so I said, okay, on the side, I have a side business. I'm starting, I'm a psychic medium. And he just looked at me. He was like, Oh, your life's about to change. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and so, uh, he started talking to me about, um, just the Bible and, and Jesus and God. And at first, like, before he even really said anything, like, I got the feeling that he was, like, you know, Bible thumper. So I was like, ugh, like, why, why, why? I don't want any of that stuff. Like, I know what I'm doing. I know, you know, I, I've got it. I know the power. I've got it, okay? That's, that's what my mind was thinking. And so he just started talking to me, and God bless him. He stayed up, like, we stayed up, like, all night, and he was answering all my questions about, like, you know, I, 
obviously all the questions that we have, right? Like, where am I? Why am I here? Where did I come from? Where do I go when I'm no longer here? Like all of those questions I kept asking and, and hours of talking and he'd answer the questions. And eventually we got to the end and my mind was just blown. And I was like, holy crap, there's this, there's this whole new world. Like <laughs> what I've been searching for. <laughs> and I mean, it, yeah, it helped that I, we were all Never mind, I'm not going to say that, but <laughs> come on, let's give a round of applause to Jesus. You know, the funny thing, even in a dark spot right there at that festival, there was a guy, you know, it, nothing is random. And he evangelized to her to bring her out of that darkness. God used him mightily. And so after that night, he kind of uh, answered your questions and things like that. Where was, when was that uh, breaking moment for you to receive actually Jesus Christ? How did that happen? Oh man, okay, so the, that day, you know, that all that night, woke up the next day and he was still answering my questions and then I had to go, I had to go to a birthday party for my cousin and so I went home and as I was driving home I remember this thought and it was the devil, I knew it was, but this thought came into mind, it was like, what are you doing? It's just like when he was like, did God really say to Eve, you know? So, and I was like, you know what, no, I'm not not going to listen to that like you know what am I doing I'm I, I th there's something here and so Brett had told me like hey come back the next night we'll sneak you into the festival and, and all that I was like all right cool sounds good <laughs> so I I left at you know birthday party went to the, back to the festival because it was only minutes it was in the same area and it's a massive festival but we got in he snuck me in and uh that night we started going to all the different stages and like raging and having a good time and doing things we shouldn't be doing but you know that's besides the point so we we're all feeling good having a great time and it was like the final uh stage of the night and it was uh saturday night moving into sunday morning and it was like 12 in the morning and and he had that long totem with the jewish and israeli flag he gave it to me and i was just like waving it like having a great time and uh he came up behind me and he was like so do you want to accept jesus as your lord and savior and i was like you know what <laughs> yeah <laughs> And, and so he said the prayer and I said the prayer with him and, and then he, uh, he ended up like speaking tongues in my ear and I was like, what the heck was that? And, and then, uh, you know, I, I obviously later on, I got plugged into an evangelical church, but it was crazy. Come on, let's give a hand of applause to Jesus. That is a very interesting story. Okay. Unusual salvation story. And so after you got plugged into the evangelical stuff, how did you drop all that psychic medium business and uh, being, you know, guided with all those spirit guys and things like that? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I had all these, like, spirit guides that were portraying themselves as, like, angels, and I could see them in my mind's eye. And uh, the longer I was in the psychic medium world, the more that came it started out with just one and then there were more and more and they would all have names and they it was crazy but they were getting to the point where they were actually making physical things happen like I was driving on the road one day and one of them I heard say like uh you know oh you don't believe I'm real here I'm going to show you I'm real and I saw in my mind's eye lean forward go to go knock on the glass and I heard knock knock on both the front windshield and the side window and I was like whoa that was like physical spiritual meeting and it was just it was crazy. So um, the thing that made me realize what I was doing was wrong is there's a Bible verse that says that the devil parades as an angel of light. Yeah. And uh, as soon as I read that, I realized it was like uh, scales fell off my eyes that there were times where I would see these like angels or spirit guides that were around me. And God would like reveal to me that their white pearlescent wings that I would see would just all of a sudden be like this flash of like smoldering, decaying black wing. And I was like questioning that, but I wasn't a Christian at the time. So I just let it go. And I was just like, okay, that that's weird. But then after I became a Christian, I read that and it was just like, God made it he connected the two. He was like, you see that the devil parades as an angel of light. He was showing himself to you as good, as white, as light, as pretty. But underneath, I was showing you what was really there. And so it was just, it was crazy. And I dropped all that. I was like, okay, yes, there's a spirit world. Obviously, I know that. But it, it, there is a good, there is a bad, there is a light, there is evil. And the devil parades as an angel of light. He makes himself look good, you know, through so many things. Come on, we are so happy that you decided to drop that stuff, 
to follow Jesus Christ and I know that when you moved to Tri-Cities uh, what actually could you please share a little bit how did you move to Tri-Cities how did you end up at Hungry Gen and deliverance that took place in your life should I tell about like from Tennessee to Michigan then to Washington or yeah sure okay all right I don't want to go too long so um okay so uh, Brett and I started uh dating and I moved down to Tennessee where he was living he was from Michigan but uh, I moved down there to his office and I started working as a nutrition practitioner there and um I was there for a year and a half a lot of stuff happened and I needed to leave because things just fell apart so I came back to Michigan and the same exact time that everything fell apart and I came back to Michigan my dad who had been in Montana uh, was coming back to Michigan as well and he was going to go back out west to work at a job that was close to Connell his next job was close to Connell and him and my grandma were both like kid why don't you just go out to out west with him you know experience him you don't have any ties you know anything to hold me down you've had a lot of crazy things in your past they didn't say that but you know <laughs> uh and so I was like you know what all right I'm I'm gonna do that so I went out west with them and uh lived with my dad in Connell for a year and in that time I uh got a job I started going to school here at Gather for Him Christian College and then um, I got a job doing the nutrition work again. And so I just started get really getting rooted in here. And I really liked what was going on. And uh, so I started looking for a church. I started at uh, the garden. I checked out a few different ones. And then I ended up here. And I really liked it when I came here. Um, and so then I uh, met my husband. <laughs> and he found out that he was also going here. So it just, it stuck. <laughs> and they actually recently just got married. Come on, let's just... Congratulations, you guys. And I know that, the, would you share really quickly, uh, lastly, what are the things that you still kind of struggled with emotionally and that took you to the deliverance and what happened after deliverance? Yeah, so I was having like a lot of like night terrors, like anytime it was lights up, I was afraid of the dark, basically. So 24, 25 year old, that's afraid of the dark, but that's what the devil can do. So, uh, and I was having a lot of anxiety and I was still having some physical health issues because I treated my body really poorly for like four years with a lot of drugs and all that stuff. And so my body was still healing from a lot of stuff, but there was also part of it that was spiritual that, you know, I had opened myself up to a lot of things spiritually and that opened doors that needed to be closed. So, um, I had gotten hold of Casey, who is really good friends with my husband. And, uh, we talked about doing a deliverance and we did, and I have been constantly getting better since. Come on, come on. Let's put our hands together. Come on. So lastly, what is your advice to people who might be um, dumbling into some uh, occultic stuff, new age practices, uh, different kinds of religions, something that it, of the dark and that we know that, what would you suggest them if they are even curious about that stuff? Not all religions are the same. They are not all preaching one message. That was a big lie that I believe that they were all preaching the same message and they are not. They are very, very different and Jesus is the one and only true way. He is. There's no other way around it. And if you are thinking about or if you have somebody talking to you about or you are questioning things, like going to search for it on your own spiritually will lead you down dark paths where you are going to open doors that you don't want to open and you're going to have to heal from later. So stop. Wait a minute. Open the Bible. Talk to somebody you know that's a leader. Talk to somebody you know, you know, and obviously... Just talk to somebody in the church. Talk to somebody who's been through it. You know, I've been through it, you know, and it's, you will get, as, as I said earlier, devil is a liar and he can parade as an angel of light in many ways. And it's not just spiritual too. He can parade as an angel of light in, an, you know, another person in your mind and the thought. So you, you got to be really careful. And the only way you're going to be able to be careful is by reading that word, keeping your heart open to the Holy Spirit and being led by him. Come on, that was so good. Preach it. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I really appreciate your testimony. Thank you.